Welcome, I'm Glenn Anderson with the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation. For more than 26 years, this TV series has explored a wide variety of issues that relate to peace, social justice, the environment, economics, nonviolent social change, and other interesting topics. Usually, I design the program around one topic, and then I recruit high-quality guests to discuss that topic. This month's program reverses the process. I've invited three high-quality guests and asked them to talk about whatever they want. While we were preparing for the program, it seemed that their interests converged around fresh ways of looking at how to make peace from the local level all the way up to the global level. And so that has emerged as the topic for this month's program, peace from local to global. Roseanne Rance, Holly Gwynn Graham, and Larry Kirshner have always had fresh and interesting things to say, and I've, I've enjoyed their friendship for a great many years. So when I decided to start with three high-quality guests instead of a predetermined topic, these were my first three choices, and I'm delighted that all three said yes to serving as guests on this program. I'm sure you also will enjoy their warmth, wisdom, insights, and creativity. This will be an interesting and enjoyable hour. We'll discuss some serious issues and we'll play with a lot of creative possibilities. Roseanne Rance has long, deep roots in our community. An amazingly diverse range of people enjoy Roseanne's friendship. I've enjoyed working with her on a variety of issues and activities, including several through the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation. She always brings a warmth and wisdom to whatever she does and I'm delighted that she's a guest in this program. Welcome, Roseanne. Glenn, it's wonderful <laughs> being here. I'm so glad you invited me. Great, thanks. Um, Holly Gwynn Graham grew up in Florida and established strong reputations in England, the United States, and elsewhere for her musical and dramatic creativity and for her technical expertise on issues such as nuclear power, nuclear weapons, and the militarization of space and other environmental and social issues. Holly deftly combines serious knowledge with creative expression, and she's a lot of fun to interact with. Welcome, Holly, good to have you here. Thank you, Glenn, it's Thanks. a joy. Okay, uh, Larry Kirshner served in the Army during the Vietnam War, and he has volunteered vigorously in the peace movement ever since then, including Veterans for Peace and the Fellowship of Reconciliation. Larry is willing and able to grapple seriously with the biggest and toughest political issues. He has traveled on peace delegations to Iraq, Afghanistan, Vietnam, and Korea, and he combines spiritual depth with personal courage and relentless persistence. Welcome, Larry. Mm -hmm. I'm Thanks. glad you're a guest. So let's start with uh, Roseanne. Roseanne has a story about uh, something that happened in her neighborhood uh, this past March 12 when a man was carrying an umbrella. And that story is a good place to start to get us into the program. Yes, um, this happened in my neighborhood a couple blocks from where I live. And um, a young woman saw a man carrying what she thought was a gun. And uh, he was getting on a bus. It was a, just a block away from a grade school, which was bad. And it ended up that um, they were able to trace him by the camera on the bus and knew where he got off and where he got on again. But within two hours, they had called uh, forces from the city police to the county sheriff, to the state police, as well as a helicopter and a police dog to look for this, this dangerous man. And it just went on and on. It turned out he was visiting his mother, and it was just a plain umbrella. And, and he said, it's strange how a turtleneck and a cap can turn into a, a deranged man with a gun. Uh, and, the, and a ski mask was the perception. Right, right. And so the umbrella was perceived as a gun, and his dark clothing was perceived as... Right, he had his turtleneck yeah. up. It, yeah. It was cold. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, what can we learn from this experience? 
Well, my, my thing is about neighborhoods is that people get to know each other. And um, if people would um, get to know their neighbors, and when uh, they get to know their neighbors, get to know their kids. Mm -hmm. So kids will grow up knowing their neighbors. Mm -hmm. Get to know those little boys' names and say hi to them mm -hmm. when you pass by. Anything that will bring uh, neighbors together. I have a pet project that I haven't accomplished yet. I'd like to initiate uh, a fr Sunday front yard. And every fourth Sunday of the month, people would sit in their front yard mm -hmm. and, or walk around their neighborhood. And they could sit in the front yard and read the paper or snooze mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever. And people would walk by and mm -hmm. say hello. And within a short time, they would know each other. Mm -hmm. And all kinds of good things can happen from that. And, the, and then when you see somebody, you'll see them as a person and not have your brain turn an umbrella into right. the image of a gun or, right. yeah. Um, you have a, a poem called A Fly on the Wall. Oh, yes. Can you share that with us? Uh, Roseanne writes wonderful poetry, and I've heard her share a number of these with us. If you could um, share that one. Actually, I, the, the other poem I have is about neighborhoods. Oh, could I read do that, that one? one? Sure, sure. We can do that. Um, one thing I do a lot is take the bus. Uh -huh. And I love taking the bus because you just experience all kinds of things. And this was a bus ride uh -huh. uh, on a Wednesday afternoon on the number 21. Okay. It's time to go. She starts the bus, then spots the stroller on the curb, a toddler seat seated with the groceries, a young father standing alongside. We can make the space, the driver says, motioning four riders to the back. She locks the stroller in its place, then turns around to see outside a woman waiting in a wheelchair. Wheelchairs have priority over strollers, she calls out, and the young father says softly, I'd better get off, but someone calls out, you'll wait an hour, and the driver says, we'll make room for you both. The driver secures the vehicles in place and sees an old man holding tight to a bar. She finds a seat for him and lectures everyone. If you need a seat, ask for one. If you've already got one, offer it. She tosses her dark hair and calls out, are we having fun yet? <laughs> All aboard smile as the bus leaves the terminal, heads up Fourth Avenue with a load of Northeast neighborhood folks headed for home. The young dad pulls the cord at Central Street, but he can't move past the stroller to get to the front door. But another young man steps up to help with the stroller. I know, he says, I have little ones at home. This small bus on a short route with a splendid driver has surely turned into a golden chariot, blazing the light of humanity all over town spreading good far and wide, soaring. Okay, exactly. thank you for sharing that. Yeah, That's and thanks wonderful. for writing that, yeah. <laughs> so there, there are all these ways of having a neighborhood, even if your neighborhood is on wheels as right. a bus. Right. And that's, that's a good thing. I remember as, as, uh, as we've talked about you know, preparing for the program and, and about how people are taught as little kids to be you know, afraid of somebody who's different. Don't talk to strangers, the parents keep saying. Mm -hmm. And one of the signs we have for the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation Peace Vigil says, talk with strangers. Yeah. And how much different our world would be if we actually talked with people that we don't know. You remember George Carlin, he's been on my mind. Yeah. And one of the things he said was, if we could just go around the world and shake hands with everybody, then when it's time to make war, we would just say, no, no, I've met them, they're fine. <laughs> and, you yeah. know, it would be a much better uh, world. Uh -huh. yeah. and that, that bus is how communities develop. That's but, right. I mean, yeah. once you know someone, 
you're not you're not going to be fearful of them. Right. So that that makes that's what makes community. Or yeah. you know where not to push those buttons. That you know too. because like <laughs> I mean yeah. there are people yeah. that you can push a button and get a terrible response. Uh -huh. But if you know them and you uh -huh. know their support mm -hmm. group or what they don't have, you can ameliorate yeah. a situation and be a community member. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful poem. So e even even in neighborhoods, people don't know the folks who live just sometimes next door or across the street okay. or less likely a few houses away. Um, and how could we increase neighborliness? You mentioned your idea about having the fourth Sunday of each month where you, you're out in the front porch, front yard, or walking through the neighborhood meeting people. Are there some other ways to improve or increase neighborliness, whether at the neighborhood level or in other settings? Well, there are neighborhood associations, and I think that helps a lot if, if they focus on the right things. So, and that means getting people together, yeah. like we've talked about, and not focusing too much on fear, uh, safety, they call it. Mm -hmm. But it, so, sometimes <coughs> those get over the line into fear making. Yeah. And so that would be like fear of teenagers or fear of somebody who doesn't look like the rest right. of us in the neighborhood or something. Right. Um, it's like the sheriff in Florida today yeah. said, yeah. Ask, sent out a letter that people should <coughs> be on high alert for anybody or anything that looks suspicious. Yeah. And that can put everybody. Yeah, yeah. Like the umbrella. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it'll be a whole epidemic of those umbrella episodes. When Jackie Hudson, Carol, and Ardeth uh -huh. were arrested and on that At nuclear missile silo, yeah. they were they were actually seen with cameras, and the cameras were transmitting, and the MPs that ran through the gates in their Humvees uh -huh. thought they were six foot tall mustachioed men and these two, <laughs> I don't think I think Ardith is they're the tallest petite, and she's five seven yeah, they're or all eight petite yeah they were petite little women whom they you know immediately yeah. thought were horrible terrorists yeah. and yeah. it took them still took them an hour to get there yeah well physiologically if you're <laughs> if you're living in fear and <coughs> your your brain functions on the amygdala level and it doesn't get to the higher higher rational part of the brain mm. fear keeps you in the fight or flight so yeah. it limits your ability to see something other than what you expect to see mm. mm -hmm. so that's exactly they expected to see yeah. something yeah. dangerous so that's what they saw despite what was going into their brain so, sometimes so. it takes yeah. a creative a creative action and there's a story that i read about in um in the 1970s from a, uh, an old issue of the National Fellowship of Reconciliations magazine called Fellowship. And somebody was reporting on, uh, I don't remember what, one of these big old crime-ridden cities back east, you know, that we all have, all of us out here in the west have stereotypes about those cities. And, and but it was one of those big old cities, it was crime-ridden neighborhood and stuff. And there's a teenage kid who knew and they were all poor. This teenage kid knew that his mom had always wanted a piano and they could never afford one. And so one day he broke into a music store, stole a piano, and wheeled it down the street toward their house. Well, of course, the cops came and they arrested the kid. They hauled him off. And the piano was still sitting there in this urban neighborhood on a whatever day of the week. And it was getting into the late afternoon, evening. And the piano was still there, and somebody, normally people are afraid to come out of their houses at that neighborhood, but somebody came out and started plunking out a tune, somebody who knew how to play, and somebody else came out, and they knew how to play, and some people came out, and they started singing. And pretty soon, they had this whole community of neighborhood neighbors <laughs> from these apartment buildings all around who would come out, and they're having a jam, or, and somebody would bring out another instrument so they can jam with the piano and sing and all. And it was a wonderful party, and then finally the police came by later on that night and, and confiscated the piano and moved it back to the piano store. And what was interesting, according to the person who wrote this article about this incident, was that when, when they looked at the police records later on, they found that that night there was no other crime in that neighborhood other than the theft of the piano the original piano theft, but that was it. Otherwise, everybody was out 
outside great story. In, in the neighborhood and interacting with people and know what they're crying. It just changed, and that was a, a bold creative act, not that we recommend stealing pianos, <laughs> but sometimes a bold creative act Darn. could change the dynamics. And in fact, that's, that's one of the things that, that nonviolence does, is nonviolence <laughs> rewrites the script of what's going on. So you're expected to act in some way by the oppressor or by the system or whatever. And you say, no, I'm gonna do something different. And you rewrite the script. Mm -hmm. and You rewrite the script and you make people take another look at what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, so they have to stop and think, is, is what I'm seeing what's really there? Yeah. It, because if you change it, they, the parameters change and they have to look at something yeah. differently. And, and maybe play a new role, right. maybe interact in some fresh ways, and mm -hmm. step out of your traditional stuff that you're trapped in. Right. Yeah. Like, whoa. Defuse the situation. Yeah, yeah. Starhawk writes about that in The Fifth Sacred Thing, another one of my famous favorite books, and she calls it El Mundo Bueno. You mm. move into another reality uh -huh. where you have the power to change the story's ending. Your neighborhood is so great for what you want to do. Mine is more spread out, but mm -hmm. we had a neighbor throw a sort of a block party, get to know the neighbors, and it, it was lovely. And I, st I think it's really important that you know the neighbors. You know. mm -hmm. When I'm substituting, I go to a specific school often, so I get to know that neighborhood and the kids in it, and it's worth its weight in gold. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. You have to step forward to the kids. They, mm -hmm. Kids walk by our house to school all the time, and they walk with their heads down mostly. But I make a point of saying hi to them, mm -hmm. and when I do, then they're saying hi right back. Mm -hmm. You've just got to open, the, open it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, beca because you've connected as one person to another instead mm -hmm. of, hi, I'm this old geezer, and I'm going to... You know, push this kid away because I'm afraid of kids. You know, yeah. I mean that—that's the roles that that we're expected to have, yeah. and and you step out of that role, and that's that's a whole different thing. Um, there's a, another thing I want to mention that's that's related to this. Um, uh, some years ago, uh, a public opinion survey about gay and lesbian concerns asked people what they thought about gay and lesbian rights. It was a survey with a bunch of questions, and one of the questions toward the end was do you know any gays or lesbians? And the people who had expressed the most anti-gay and anti-lesbian opinions were people who said, no, I don't know any. And that, that raised a couple of thoughts in my mind. One is, like we were talking about, if, if, it, if you don't know somebody, you'll be afraid or negative toward the stranger, the other. But the other is, maybe these people had conveyed their negativity so the relatives and friends and neighbors who are gay and lesbian knew it was not safe to come out, mm -hmm. you know, to, to reveal their, who they are to these bigoted people. Right. And so again, it's one of these reinforcing things mm -hmm. about if, if, you're, if you have a bias, it'll just keep you locked into this and not let you be open to meeting, finding out that your nephew or niece or coworker or whatever uh, 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 New Zealand just today passed the a law giving complete rights for marriage to uh, uh, gay people, mm -hmm. and uh, that raised a lot of uh, questions in Australia, which is just across the Tasman yeah. Sea, where the majority of the people in all the polls approve of uh, marriage equality, but the people in charge of the legislature are adamant that they're not going to let this happen in Australia. So it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see what happens yeah. over the course of the next few years. Yeah. This um, may be an example of the people leaving the leaders. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what are some remedies for the, the problems we've discussed? We, we've talked about some problems and solutions, but <coughs> I want to play some more with, with other possible remedies, including maybe some creative uh, ones. Um, when we were preparing for the program, Larry, you suggested that people need to seek independent sources of information, develop critical thinking skills, think for themselves. Yeah, it's, if you look at the educational system in this country, two of the biggest things that aren't taught are history and critical thinking. Um, I think I saw a poll that said even 40% of college graduates have no idea how to do critical analysis 
of a situation. Mm -hmm. um, and until people learn to think for themselves and not just do what they're told, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a lot of the problems that we have. I mean, the, the, the system is designed to create uh, people who obey. That's, mm -hmm. that's what the whole system is. Mm -hmm. Obey on the job, obey the police officer, obey the law, obey mm -hmm. whatever situation always um, kowtow to authority. Yeah. And we need to have people who are willing to question authority. Yeah. Um, and that, that should be the social norm that you are able to question authority. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a revolution or throw mm -hmm. grenades, or, but you have to be able to think in your yeah. own mind, is what they're telling me real? Yeah. As you mentioned that, I thought of something that some folks had done the, uh, several years ago as, just as a social experiment. They, uh, uh, a group of people got together on the, sort of on the edge of the Delaware border with one other state, and, and they're stopping people driving on the highway to Delaware, and they, they said, Delaware is closed today. <laughs> Delaware is closed today. And, the, and, and a lot of the drivers said, oh, well, is New Jersey open? I mean, uh, and they, they were just accepting at face value. If some stranger told them Delaware is closed today, they just accepted that. You know, if, 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 you're, if, if you are dressed like an authority figure, you know, who knows? Yeah, it makes me think um, when, you, when you enter the military, they, they yell at you, they give you bad food, they don't let you sleep enough, yeah. they basically break you they, down. They cut your hair, mm -hmm. they, they tell you they what to wear, when to get alike. up. They yell, yeah. they get in your face, and it's, and it's like joining a cult. Yeah. Cults do the same thing. Yeah. They destroy your ability to think for yourself. Mm -hmm. And we as a society as a whole here in America tend to do that. So we, we have what I call willful ignorance yeah. mm -hmm. about many of the problems that we're involved in because we don't, as a whole, we don't want to look at them because if we really look at the problems, we would have to do something different mm -hmm. than what we're doing. And we just don't seem to have the time or the will to look into things any deeply because we're so busy with the media of one sort or another. The, the television, the radio, the newspapers, the well, handheld things. Yeah. Yeah. And there just isn't the place or the will to do anything different. I'm seeing a different story, and I'm glad, because I'm a substitute teacher, what my friend Frank called, ah, oh, you're on the front lines, he said to me a few years ago. And it is kind of like that. But at my age, I've developed <clears throat> a better aptitude for really teaching and a greater sense of humor. And a critical set of skills also that lets me look at what's being taught and how hard it is for teachers on every level, especially high school, to do 55 minutes a day with a kid and then have the parent come in and say, my child doesn't know history and it's your fault and the kid hasn't turned in any homework or claimed he had. You know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of excuses people use for not relating properly to their own children. The 80s seem to have been an epidemic of kind of unfortunate parenting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now things are a little better. There are volunteers in school, but I am seeing kids who when you speak, like we had talked about teachable moments, <clears throat> they come up. Sometimes they can cost you a job. I mean, they have for me. But I am not afraid any longer. If I feel I know something true, I'm going to speak about it. You know, that's a teachable moment. And kids are like this. And you say something that's real, and they're like flowers to the sun. Mm. Suddenly, you know, the stem is stronger and the leaves are perking up because they want to know. And I'm talking about first graders as much as I'm talking mm. about seniors in high school. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I see a trend toward real honesty. I mean, when you think about the bravery of the gay liberation movement mm -hmm. and how brave they've all been to come out and how brave they are still being and how brave the civil rights people were when they marched, you know, and how brave those people were and how brave our plowshares activists are and how brave our yeah. trident activists yeah, the are. Plowshares are the people zero. who nonviolently 
trespass on yes. nuclear plants. And pour their nuclear blood nuclear in weapons. the sign of a yeah. cross and say, this is the only blood we are willing to shed, yeah. and it's ours, and it's been tested for HIV, <laughs> and we're clean, you know. But <clears throat> it's like, I see a positive trend. I don't know where it's heading. But I see people that, I see kids willing to laugh. I see kids willing to mediate for each other because they're being ta taught how in schools, mm -hmm. you know. So right. I think we live in a pretty good town. Uh, uh, you're in where, Seattle? I'm in Centralia. You're in it's Centralia. A, it's a lot more politically conservative. And I, I, I hope you're right. I don't think there are enough teachers yet who are willing to do that. A recent, a recent poll was looking at um, the question of was it correct that we be involved in Vietnam? And all the people our age, 70%, 80% said yes. Of the 17 to 25 year olds, 70% of them said yes, we should have been there. Mm -hmm. The people our age, obviously we said no, that you know, we recognize it for the mistake that it was, but the young kids, and I think that's the combination of they don't know history, and they don't know how to do critical thinking. Well, the the, yeah. the book, the, the textbooks are biased. The textbooks, the textbooks is one of the big Do not problems. tell the truth. You said kids want to know the truth, and, and the textbooks do not tell the you truth. Know, you drag out Howard Zinn, and suddenly you've yeah. got a whole new yeah. song yeah. going on. Yeah. It's like yeah. fabulous. Uh, I, the yeah. book, you know? The Lies My Teacher Told Me. Oh, that's yeah, a that's good one. That's oh, a really? great book. And yeah. if you've got Howard Zinn's People's History, You've got yeah. a real good grip right. on a on a beginning of an understanding yeah. of the story of the losers right. as well as yeah. the winners. Well, and and this and is pervasive. Important. And this is pervasive in the media, <coughs> in 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 even regular newspapers. Every newspaper has a business page. Where's the labor page? Exactly. The business page is always celebrating. Oh, this corporation has yeah. their profits up this quarter, and oh, here's the stock market quotes and blah blah blah, and all, all the the business boosterism. Where's the labor page? Where's the page written by, by working people? Where's the page written by unions of people struggling for basic economic and human rights on the job? You it's see not a, there. You That's see a, a great deal idea. of uh, support for the military in all of its factions or forms. Where's the support for the peacemakers? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned with, with there in, um, uh, in May the, the, the jury in Tennessee right. found uh, uh, Transform Drupy. now, plow, plow three, share. Yeah, Drupy. three people, uh, uh, an right. 82-year-old right. nun right. and two other older guys mm -hmm. who are complete pacifists, right. trespass yeah. onto supposedly the most secured nuclear weapons plant in the country in, in Tennessee. And they got way in there. The whole plant security was defective. The people on the, the employees there screwed up and didn't recognize it. The people were exposing the dangers of nuclear weapons, and and when they were found guilty, they they were treated like terrorists. Well, Instead initially, of, initially <laughs> they were charged with a misdemeanor trespass. It's, yeah, it started out with mm -hmm. just and that then, charge, and then yeah. the word started going around about how potentially, you know, what what they had done, yeah. and people got embarrassed. Right, so people started losing the, their jobs. Right, then they were charged with uh, a felony, federal felony, mm -hmm. and they finally ended up being charged with sabotage, right. which technically makes them a terrorist. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's how the government turns a peacemaker into a yeah. terrorist. And it's because, like you say, the government got embarrassed. Exactly. And they were trying mm -hmm. to raise the issue of, of these deadly nuclear weapons, which are in violation of international law. Exactly. Right. Plus, Obama's just spent another $85 billion to upgrade the weapons plant. That's right. ORIPA. Right. The Oak Ridge right. uh, yeah. Yeah. Environmental, Environmental Peace Alliance. Peace Alliance. Yeah, and those I, are people. I send people. money to them every year. They're great. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're supporting terrorists. <laughs> I send my <laughs> widow's might as well. But, yeah. you know, I mean, pretty soon. But, that, we, but that's that's how that stuff creeps if along. If we don't keep speaking There's up for Trident them. There's the submarine base out yeah. here at Bangor. They're planning mm -hmm. to spend $180 billion yeah. redoing yeah. the current nuclear weapons we already have, upgrading them. Yeah. $180 yeah. billion. Yeah. Dollars. And, and keep them uh, lasting almost through the end of this century, right. almost up to, to the year 2100, right. when the United States is supposed to be getting rid of nuclear weapons. Right. We signed an agreement but that's just at the rhetoric them. level. Yeah. But the, the actual budgetary stuff, wasting our tax dollars and endangering the world, yeah. still goes up for more nukes. And the rest of the world knows that. The news media in this country do not report the realities mm -hmm. of nuclear weapons, but the rest of the world knows it, yeah. and the American people end up being 
grossly misinformed and disinformed, lied to, and so mm -hmm. ordinary Americans don't know what's going on, and then we end up with politicians who vote for more mm -hmm. money for nuclear weapons in violation of international law, and nobody calls them on it, yep. except for our friends. And nuclear weapons is just maybe one of the worst problems or the most dangerous, but only one. Mm -hmm. I think it's time to read The Fly on the Wall. Mm -hmm. Do it. Do it. Thank you. <laughs> it's short. And then sing Love Will Lead Us. Okay. Good. I'll sing one then. Great, thanks. If I were a fly on the wall, hearing everything but invisible to all, in what rooms would I hear the talk of those who increase their wealth at the trough of war, who feed their power by trumpeting fear, but find no profit in peace? But I am on the wall, hearing cries of hunger, of health care denied, of injustice called forth in the name of security, while the earth is torn beyond repair. Outside the screen, hear the buzz. It's awful, so awful. That's the buzz. Thank you. I wrote this song for the activists who crossed the line at the Trident base all the time. And Jackie Hudson was still alive then, our dear Jackie. Uh -huh. The Plowshares Nun. Yeah, and she was a guest on our TV program a number Not of times. Surprised, here. wasn't she wonderful? She was great. She was basically killed by the prison system. I mean, we could right, go on and on with the inequities, yeah. Yeah, iniquities she, of the she, whole thing. Yeah, she was treated so unjustly in Tennessee, uh, and they failed to deal with her worsening health conditions. Her asthma. And that's really what led led to her uh, death. Yep, it's true. So I was thinking, what makes us take the step? that puts our lives in danger. The native people say, it's a good day to die. The Buddhists are always saying, what comes next, tomorrow or the next life? We never know. I mean, you know, everybody says, oh, I'm afraid of dying, but we have to prepare, you know what I mean? So I think Jackie flew and made a clean dive, you know? We miss her terribly, but this is called Love Will Lead Me Over. Love will lead me over. As I step across the line Peace will be my cover As I step across the line As I step across the line Justice is the reason I've made that reason mine And love is all around as I step across the line, as I step across the line. This planet is our only home. It's time we learn to share. We take a step for peace on earth and all life everywhere. Love will lead us over as we step across the line. And peace will be our cover as we step across the line, as we step across the line. They are all our children, no matter near or far. Let's take these steps for them, no matter who they are. For love will lead us over as we step across the line. And peace is bound to be our cover as we step across the line. As we step across the line as we step across the line as we step across the line
Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Beautiful. Love. I do believe love yeah. can shift consciousness. Right. And music. Music can yeah. shift <laughs> consciousness too. So respect the musician at That's your right. next rally. Right. Don't be talking right. through the music. Don't That's be saying, right. listen to the culture. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you are. <laughs> yeah, so, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That well, was and, and the, the step across the line is, is like, okay, that's the individual choice of somebody who will step over onto the federal side of across that blue line at the Trident nuclear submarine base and put yourself at risk with, with the feds. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, that becomes an individual choice not to take lightly, but to grapple with and, and do it when that's right. It's a metaphysical thing, too, and it's yeah, a metaphorical yes. line as well. Yes. When you really cross the line of your ignorance and you realize that your ignorance is the gateway mm -hmm. to fear, mm -hmm. then you step across the line yeah. of your ignorance and you say, okay, like Fran Peavy, the great activist who yes. founded Crabgrass, she went to Europe and she sat on a park bench with right. a sign, actually, that said, so, American willing to listen. Yes. And <laughs> she was, and all these people came. Oh, thank you. I'm, yeah. I'd love to say some things to you. Yeah, this was during this was during the Vietnam War yeah, when when a lot of people in other countries had things to say to the U.S. <laughs> I, re I read her book and, and that story, but that was a, during the Vietnam War. There was a need for people to talk to Americans about Absolutely. what was going on, and there was a need for Americans to be able to listen because the rest of the world knew what our government was doing, even if the people in this country. Uh, we're, we're shielded from the, the truth. That's right. So well, that, that, that vigil, line, vigiline so is good for that. Yeah. For putting yeah. people out on the streets yeah. with signs yeah. to talk to them. Yeah. Wednesday noon hour at Sylvester Park, Friday late afternoon at uh, Percival Landing. It's, for how many years now, Glenn? Uh, it's been, well, March 5th, 1980 at Sylvester Park every Wednesday and, and uh, since November 98 at Percival Landing by the Kissing Statue. We had Jerry Somerset up in the Skagit oh, yes. Valley, the, the Energizer Bunny, like Glenn of Vigiling, yeah, he, and Tope yeah. Ryan. Yes, oh, I, I knew both those guys. They were all guys. dear friends yeah, of mine. Yeah, I knew both those guys. Yeah, yeah I found it Skagit Citizens kind of for Pipers Nuclear down Disarmament. We're in Centralia, but we're in our 11th year of the weekly vigil in front of the Centralia <laughs> Library. Yeah. Excellent. Saturday, Excellent. Saturday from Excellent. noon to one, right downtown, and you yeah. get a good response. We actually, Better than the, the response that we had when we first started was pretty negative. But now it's rare that we get anyone saying anything negative yeah. com coming by. We actually occasionally have people stop and talk, and uh -huh. so it's, it's good. Little by little, the demographics are changing. You know, in towns like Shelton, of course, Yelm, yeah. all the Ramsters, as they call uh -huh. themselves, have really enlightened. I mean, quite a nice, there's a good feeling there. Uh -huh. And I think Shelton's changing. I think Centralia yeah. will yeah. eventually. I mean, it's just yeah, it's a trickle along spread, theory. Spread. Yeah. Love and acceptance yeah. and a new tolerance yeah. and that sort of thinking. Mm -hmm. So so there's a, a mixed combination as we've been talking through the program. There's a, a number of problems of fear and and alienation and so forth, but there's also people stepping across the line and people using mm -hmm. poetry and other methods uh, and other other all kinds of ways to, to connect. Growing food is a big one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that that's our May two thousand thirteen T V program. Uh, is uh, creating a sustainable local food system to grow grow food in your own yard. Mm. Don't haul it in from across the country, or don't don't haul in uh, oranges from Australia during the off season mm -hmm. uh, at this time of the climate crisis. Another good book, Animal Vegetable Miracle by Barbara King Solver. Oh. An incredibly mm -hmm. good book about living within your means in your area. Yeah. Because the, the, the problems are, are quite serious. And you, when we were talking on the phone, Larry, you mentioned uh, Johan uh, Galtung, yeah. uh, Norwegian. He's a Norwegian historian who specializes in teaching peace Sorry. studies. And yeah. He's done a number of uh, pretty in-depth analysis of empire, basically. Mm -hmm. And he predicted in 1980 that within 10 years, the Soviet empire would collapse. And it mm -hmm. collapsed within... Uh, a month less than 10 years. Uh -huh. mm. And in 2000, he predicted that the US empire would collapse by the year 2025. But after four years of President Bush, he said he was an accelerator to the negative. Mm. So he, he revised his, his uh, prediction and said the US empire will collapse by 2020, which is just mm. you know seven years down yeah. the road. Yeah. And he gave a, he gives a lot of different reasons for his his belief system. One of them that, that I noticed today when I was rereading something by him 
he pointed out that you could say the United States won the Second World War, but we didn't win the Korean War, we didn't win the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. we didn't win the war in Iraq, mm -hmm. we didn't win the war mm -hmm. in Afghanistan, and we haven't won the war on terror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are signs of a crumbling right. uh, empire infrastructure, and to try to counter it, we're sending, I think there's 44 countries now that we have special forces troops in. It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's trying to prop up yeah. the, the empire that is collapsing yeah. around, around us. Right, and, and there's evidence of the collapse because we can't afford to fund schools. Exactly. We can't afford to fund health care. We can't afford to, to uh, uh, have a sustainable infrastructure with solar and wind technology. Uh, we're just locked into those old things of oil and nuclear weapons and nuclear power and all those nasty stuff. Big banks are getting bigger. The ones that were too big to fail are even bigger now. And they're also too big to jail because even when they've done blatantly criminal activities, the, the federal government doesn't even want to prosecute them. It's like, whoa, no, we don't want to touch them. Right, consequences so, of, of so, taking them to trial. Yeah, so all of this stuff shows uh, cracks you know, yeah. and, and, and terrible weaknesses in the system. And so you've got to be writing a lot more poetry, Roseanne. Right. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to bail us out. You've got to write more songs to bail us out. And you've written poetry, too. Right. Right. So we, we need to do a lot more of well, a lot just, of things. If you think about <laughs> you know, Joseph Stiglitz estimates, he's a Nobel Prize yeah. economist, he yeah. estimates that the total cost of just the Iraq war will be five trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. Think yeah. what we could have done with yeah. five trillion dollars to fix the roads, the bridges, yeah. the hospitals, the schools. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. right. Well, that wasn't even a war. That was an occupation. We yeah. haven't had a real war no, uh, in a long, long time. We've yeah. occupied other countries, but we right. certainly it haven't seems really like had a legitimate war. Yeah. No, it seems like we're making up wars. Yeah. Right. Just so that we can go kill people. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and certain certain sectors get to profit. So there, there's all that there's that great question that people ask in Latin about who benefits or who right. profits. Well, I don't forget what the translation is, but there's a Latin question that people will ask that's like who benefits or who profits, and it's like it's not us. No. It's no. not us. Uh, it, it's mm -hmm. it's the the weapons manufacturers and and the the, the generals get promoted if you have if you have peacetime you don't need as many generals you don't need as many uh people working in the pentagon but if you have wars going on then all of a sudden you know you get to expand that and there's upward mobility uh for for all these people so they have a vested interest in in provoking more wars they also get a much bigger budget the pentagon budget is huge beyond the huge budget that it was in 2001 when when the uh 9 11 attacks occurred and the budget is even more huge. The CIA budget is even more huge. Both of them not only have more money, but they have more political power in shaping foreign policy. The CIA has become pretty much like another branch of the military. They've run, you know, they're running the drone program. They're doing all kinds of stuff. So it, the even though we keep losing all these wars, they're but the wars. more that the more we lose the bigger they get. And that's the opposite of, of Bush's no child left behind thing mm -hmm. with schools, where if you have a failing school, a school that fails to teach the students, they'd cut the funding. Here, if we have a military system that fails to make us more secure, we give them more money. I mean, well, one of, the, one of the things that Galtung s suggested as a possibility in this projection that he made was the possibility of a military coup in this country. Uh -huh. And everyone thinks, nah, that couldn't happen here. Mm -hmm. But just today... Yeah, today as we taped the program in mid-May. Right, the, the Pentagon yeah. was... Uh, generals were at Congress, and they were talking about, basically, they don't need Congress's approval right. to go to war any place around the world. Right. Yep. Uh, right. I the, mean, what is that but The, the 2001 um, mm -hmm. blank check to right. get the war in Afghanistan mm -hmm. and the war on terror going, right. they say that gives us a blank check to do... Any place, right. anything, any place, right. and and uh, and Obama uses it as an excuse yeah. to be able to kill anyone anywhere. Yeah, with no due process. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's, so you, it's, don't, you don't even you need know, evidence. Mm -hmm. all, it's enough to be a suspect. So. Does, the, Does he have this, any solutions? It has changed here, then we don't realize. Does it. he have he have any solutions? It sounds like we know the problem, 
and it's getting worse. I want to talk about love. I really do. I will well, not be well, gypped out of love. Okay, well, this I is. I want to talk this, about lifting the human consciousness. This is, this is the hinge chance. point in the topic. Oh, that's a hinge and, point. That's, and that's our Good next lead thing. Is in, it? Rosie. No, it is. <laughs> no, I that, we just needed it. We are that's at the, the crux of human the, evolution. Right. Yep. We can't believe and think in that old paradigm anymore. We. We can't feel powerless. We have to stop listening to the news then if it's going to get our knickers in a twist. Uh -huh. We must stop listening. Throw your television away. <laughs> Only look at Glenn's program. Only, <laughs> Only, <laughs> Only yeah. Perry you can watch that on a computer. computer. <laughs> but you know, love is real and the power yeah, right. of love. I asked kids at school today, high school kids, juniors, I said, who believes here that love can change the world? About out of 24 kids, seven hands went up. I was quite impressed. I said, that's really impressive. That's lovely. Who believes that consciousness can lift us out of um, any kind of quagmire? Four hands went up uh -huh. because we, then we discussed consciousness. But love is a big term, but every religion is based on it. Yeah. When you mm -hmm. pare everything down to the human experience, yeah. What we're doing, and we, I think we have quite a few human species on the planet now. You know, I really do. Just watch Quest for Fire if you, if you don't believe me. But I really think love is where we have to now make yeah. our choices. Mm -hmm. And we have to say the loving act must prevail over the hateful act, mm -hmm. the destructive act, and whatever you can do in your heart to, you know, accelerate that love that's really, I think, yeah. where we're at. And that's not easy. You know, I don't yeah. think love is easy. And I don't want it to sound like, oh, namby-pamby love. I do want to mention Amit Goswami. Yes. He's got a, a wonderful show now. It's a kind of repeating thing on public broadcasting called The Quantum Activist. Mm -hmm. And he talks about love and consciousness and how our collective consciousness can change reality. Yeah. I believe that. I do. I believe that. I believe, like Gurdjieff taught, that we have intervals. We have to meet. They're musical. They're spiritual. They're emotional. They're psychic. You know, but we have to get there. And I really like that idea. And he says, so meditate. Then he says, do. Then meditate and do. And he says, do, be, do, be, do, be, do, be, do. You know, it's just, go Swami, go Swami. So we lived through the Mayan apocalypse. And now. We're in this new age. We yeah. have to claim it. We have yeah. to take it by its little hand and yeah. walk with it. Because we're seed people. Right. We wouldn't be thinking this way if we weren't. Right. Because, because the, the, the dominant paradigm that we've been talking about, like what Larry just laid out for us, that stuff is broken. It doesn't work. Yeah. So you got to do something that's totally fresh. Steal a piano. <laughs> and wheel it on the street and people no, gather. No, no, don't steal a piano. Oh, okay. But be as loving as you but can. Yes. Choose yes. kindness. But, but you got to. But the idea is you got to. You got to change that. Choose that, love. That, that, yeah. the, change the way we we see things and it's and a do. Shift. I think a lot of people. Yeah, it's beautiful. The problem a lot of people would have cute. with that is that they don't know how to love, because people in the, people in our society are taught to not love themselves, mm -hmm. and until you yeah. love yourself. You yeah. have nothing right. to put out right. there. I'll tell you what, I'll play out I'll play us out and, and I'll play I Love Me instead of the one I was gonna play. Okay. Okay. Because I Love Me is a wonderful song. I sang it okay. for the juniors. And we're too. and we're not quite done. We got a few minutes left. Oh good. But Thank but, you. but but the, the when they tell us the when 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 we're taught not to love ourselves is because some corporation is trying to sell you something to make your body different or to give you something different better, to drive. Make your life you're, better. You're, yeah, you're, you're nobody until you yeah. bought right. this product that you right. can own or right. wear or right. whatever. Right. So it, it's, 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 it's And it's we need to learn to not take ourselves so seriously. We need to, if we, if we recognize who we are, we're not going to put ourselves up on a pedestal as a god, and we're not going to throw ourselves down yeah. as worthless. Yeah. We're, if we see it ourselves for who we are, then we can see other people for who they are, yeah. and then there's then there's that space mm -hmm. right, to love. Exactly, yeah. and it doesn't take our physical presence to do it. I mean, he proved he's proved uh, back to Goswami uh -huh. that in meditation, people's minds link up. Now, I'm pretty sure I was in on the founding of Greenpeace when they named it. I was 38,000 feet in the air flying back from London, but I suddenly had this phrase, 
green peace, green peace. I thought, hmm, that's unusual and <laughs> new. And then all of a sudden there's an organization uh -huh. who said, I wasn't part of the naming of the organization. <laughs> but the point being, you know, we do connect. It's how two different Nobel Prize winners across, you know, the, the mm -hmm. continent or, or a world can invent the same thing and get the same theory. Yeah. We have this quantum consciousness we're not even using yet. That's yeah. what excites me. Yeah. You know, that's what makes me filled with hope. Because if I wasn't filled with hope, I wouldn't want to live yeah. on this, you know, and worry about it all. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, get, let's, let's do the song. You want to hear I is Love that, Me? Yeah, whatever it is that you think okay. we need to hear, that's what we need to I hear. I hope this strap isn't interfering with um, my little mic no, here. If I hold it this way. Mm -hmm. All right. I love myself, I think I'm grand. I go to the movies just to hold my hand. I put my arm around my waist. And when I'm good, I kiss my face. Hey, hey, I love me. I'm the very best me that I can be. I'm writing myself a little love letter. If I love myself, I can love you better. I take myself out on a date. One thing for sure, I'm never late. When I get home, it's clear to see that I've been in good company. Hey, hey, I love me. I'm the very best me that I can be. I'm writing myself a little love letter. If I love myself, I can love you better. Take time to love the you of you, cause it's the kindest thing to do. Turn off the critic in your head and cut yourself some slack instead. Hey, hey, you love you, be the very best you that you can do. Write yourself a little love letter if you love yourself. You can love me better. We're all one human family. Let's treat each other equally. Let's live the life we love in song and help each other all life long. Hey, hey, we love we. We're the very best we that we can be. Write the world a little love letter if we love ourselves. We can all love better. Hey, hey, we love we. We're the very best we that we can be. Write this world a little love letter if we love ourselves. We can all love better. We can all love better. We can all love better. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you. That's good, 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 good. Another Hollyanna, Pollyanna. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be surprised. Yeah. So I, I believe that too. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. give us hope. Well, Thank you. Well, yeah, we, we, in, in, in so many ways, we need to get unstuck. From from the, the the crap that holds us down, and, and uh, 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 people will in in a in a religious sense will talk about having grace, you know, this this infusion of love from outside, and that sort of frees you up to let go of all the crap, and it frees you up to to be, you know, better to be the best you, and and I mean, grace is a beautifully uh, apt word. What it's what if nice. what if we had a foreign time. policy based on grace instead Wouldn't of holding grudge? Nice? You know, I mean, what the United States government was supporting that very murderous, genocidal government in Cambodia because we still had a grudge against Vietnam, which had beaten us in the Vietnam War. And when Vietnam was fighting Cambodia back in the mid 70s, because we were so mad at Vietnam still, I had a grudge against them, we took the side of Pol Pot, this, this genocidal dictator that slaughtered 2 million people. And that was okay with the United States government because we were so mad at, at Vietnam. I mean, it's like we get caught in that crap. We need to let go of that. Have some grace. What if we had a foreign policy based on um, letting go of, of, of extreme nationalism and grudges and stuff? And what if we let the kids really know the truth about these illegal wars that they've been forced yeah. to go mm -hmm. to and sold a bill of goods yeah. on? You'll be a patriot, my son. Ah, yeah. oh, come yeah. on. Yeah, so, you know, yeah I mean, such one, a lie. Yeah, one of the, one of the basic truths up. is is we're all in this together. And I, I like the wording in the National Fellowship of Reconciliation Statement of Purpose that says that we explore, uh, we, we recognize the essential unity of all creation, and we commit ourselves to exploring the power of love and truth for resolving human conflict. That's right. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's Gandhi's approach. That's right. It's all based on love and truth, and King and, and others who've picked up on that. So... Um, mm. I think we have hope. I do believe we have yeah. hope. We can't surrender to the news because <laughs> it's northeast, west, and south. And mm -hmm. 
even democracy now can make tie your knickers up you know you can really <laughs> you can work up a sweat you know and what do you do it's like yeah. meditate and read poetry meditate <laughs> and dooby 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 do exactly dooby dooby do but i'm glad we lived through the mayan yeah. apocalypse so yeah. and we can still dance yeah you know we're good you're good you know you're you we, we're talking yeah well, well that's the idea the and, and, mm -hmm. and, and how much better it be if, if we could talk with people who carry umbrellas through our neighborhood yeah. and exactly. instead of being afraid of them and, and, cool. and misperceiving, you know, because it's like that the guy got kind of put through the ringer, sort of, but he didn't even know until later what, what had gone mm -hmm. on. But, but think of all the people that got traumatized, the, the, oh, the, 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 yeah, the young woman that, that saw this and reported it to the cops and all the kids that got locked down in the school because mm -hmm. there's some mad terrorist out there. I mean, it's like, there, it's just venting more more fear on people. So the, the approaches that we're recommending, I think, are yeah. clearly better. So I want to thank all of you folks. We're out of the time, but it's been fun. It's d we did it's what we were fun. hoping to do. Yeah, it's been um, great. And I want to thank uh, Roseanne Rance and Holly Glenn Graham and Larry Kirshner. I want to thank all the folks who've been watching. During this hour, we've been talking about the current state of our neighborhoods, our nation, our world. We've recognized problems rooted in fear, stereotyping, and labeling. We've recognized problems rooted in greed for money and power. We've also played with solutions open-mindedly and creatively. We've proposed a variety of solutions that are positive and humane. And perhaps while watching this program, you've thought of additional solutions. Perhaps you've thought of how you could help your neighborhood or the larger society in which all of us live. Part of our intention with this program is to stimulate your creative solutions. So we warmly invite you to talk with your friends, talk with the people who are not yet your friends. These are strangers, uh, because a stranger is just a friend that you haven't met yet. Talk about problems, talk about solutions. And as we recommended early in the program, we invite you to uh, especially talk with, with strangers and talk with people who are different from yourself. These are all important steps toward peace. You can get information about a wide variety of issues related to peace, social justice, and nonviolence by contacting the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation at 360-491-9093 and www.olympiafor.org. We are one human family. We all share one planet. We can create a better world, but we all have to work at it. And the world needs exactly what you have to offer. Thanks.